Hello everyone and welcome to my first episode of the Game Art Talk podcast. In today's episode my guest is David Ferreira who is a character artist sent 3 years for Elite 3D in Valencia. I will be talking with him about his career, how to deal with criticism as a junior and how to stay motivated as a game artist in general. I will put his portfolio link and email into the info box so feel free to check him out. So without further ado, let's hop right into the talk. Hello and welcome to the first episode of the Game Art Talk. My first guest today is David Ferreira, who is 31 and a 3D character artist at Elite 3D. Hello, David. Hey, man. How's it going? Uh, perfectly. So I'm pretty glad I have you here for my first talk. And maybe you can talk something about yourself. Maybe introduce yourself. What are you currently doing? Yeah, keep going. So I, uh, I'm David. I'm, I'm, I'm from Portugal. I'm 31. Um, I started in this industry, the video game industry, three years ago, probably, uh, almost like, yeah, three years ago at Elite 3D. Uh, before that, I was working in the board game industry. I was modeling miniatures and um, I was, I worked in Dubai for half a year in animation studio. Uh, but my passion was always video games. So I, I went for video games all the way. Um, so at the moment I'm working at Elite 3D. I worked uh, in two Call of Duties, uh, World War II and Infinity Warfare. Uh, I've worked in a lot of uh, board game titles: Star Wars, Doom, Descent. Yeah, you World you can Wars. all find them on your portfolio. Yeah, you can I find think. them on ArtStation, so it's easy uh, for people to see, and people can ask me anything about uh, uh, the work I've done in the past. So. Yeah, so you have been in the industry for three years now. So you started at 28 at uh, Lead 3D, right? Uh, yeah, pro yeah, yeah. That's one that thing I always, I always hear. Some people get so stuck in their life or not really happy with their career, want to get into games because they play games, they're interested in games. It's, it's a pretty interesting topic, to be honest. And yeah, so what did you do before you get in the industry? Um, so when I was like 19, I I was a little bit you finished lost. school, right? Yeah, I finished school. I I never lost a no year idea. in 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 my life. My my my, my parents are teachers, so oh, <laughs> if I, I yeah. if I lose a, a year of my life in school, they would kill me, right? <laughs> um, so like in Portugal, there's always there wasn't always this uh, gaming industry or cinema industry. You know, it's, I think it's, they have it's, nothing, right? They, yeah, they, they, they don't have they, any industry. If, if they have, it's super little and no one super knows indie. about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no one knows about. And everything thinks it's like a Hollywood thing. You know, you have to go to L.A. or Hollywood and, you know, to America to work those in those countries. places. Yeah. Yes. And, and so I decided to, to go for engineering because my father wanted me to be an engineer. And because it's, it's a better job than being whatever, right? And... Yeah. Uh, I was studying engineering. I studied one year of physics engineering, and then you I studied, studied right in Lisbon, right? Yes, I studied. I did everything in Lisbon. I uh, I never left Portugal um, to work or to study. Okay. Uh, so I studied one year of physics and then two years of environmental engineering, and I just decided, like, look, this isn't for me. <laughs> I'm not going to be engineer for my whole life. So, and in the meantime, I was I was working as um, like I work in stores, you know. I worked at kids' parties. I I was a magician at kids' parties. Oh, yeah, people, yeah. You, you most people don't know this. Uh, I, I always try to keep it as a secret. I, I'm proud of it, but I only people who know me very closely know that I'm t into magic. Um, so but, you just work jobs to get money and, yeah. Uh, yeah, and study at the same time. Keep, and like to keep trying living. To yeah, trying to discover, like, what I'm going to do with my life, right? So... Yeah, and, it's, it's a hard process, uh, especially yes. in Germany as well. After school, you have no idea what to do with your life. It's Exactly. I can tell the young guys out there, take your time. Just take one, two years and really figure out what to do. I had the same in my life. And yeah, uh, I only can uh, only can yeah give you this advice, guys. And one of the reasons like I, I decided to go for for video game industry and or any other industry, I was I was listening to podcasts of other people. And yeah, uh, those people give, gave me a lot of courage in terms of they were like, for example, Chris Costa, I think he started when he was 30. He was a banker for many years. So I was like, whoa, if this guy can do it, like he works at the top. Uh, this is so top, funny. Right? This is so funny. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, look, if this guy does it, I mean, I probably have a chance to. Right. So I, I just went all in like, OK, let's let's start studying this. And um, and I started studying in Portugal. There was like um 
a degree in digital animation. So I decided to go for it and I studied three years. I, I have a degree in animation, but in the meantime, I was like, mm, maybe my passion is games, right? So, but like 3D is, is always correlated to cinema and video games and publicity and etc. right? But I was always more into games. I love cinema, but games are, I love, I don't know why, but I love low polys. <laughs> I really like low polys, like the illusion of something that has a lot of detail and has like nothing, no n super yeah, little polycam. Yeah, that's kind of the magic is which yes. is done in games. That's... I, I, I like to work in the limited, uh, I don't know why, because uh, like you have so much limited poly count and so much little uh, limited uh, texture size and you have to make the best out of it. And it's so rewarding, I don't know why, I like it. When I, I have like, I, I love it when I make a normal map or aim into occlusion and just put it in, in the low poly and I'm like, Whoa. this is so satisfying. Look, yeah, it looks like it looks like the high poly and it, yeah. it's nothing, nothing it's alike, nothing. you know? Yeah, and I love that, that, that feeling, that sensation. So <laughs> that's why I prefer um, uh, low, low poly and yeah, not, poly. not, not, not getting into film because they, they don't have this limitation of polys, uh, right? Yeah, I mean, like movie movie industry was never my thing, uh, but I love movies so much more than games. Actually, it's weird because I love yeah I love more movies than games, but I work for games uh, and not for for movies. <laughs> so yeah, it's it's weird, but but it's I it's it's the way it is. <laughs> so. So how did you become a character artist? Every time I hear about something about getting into character stuff and everybody says, please don't get into character artists. It's so hard. It, the competition is so amazing and it's really hard to land a job in the industry. So maybe you can tell me something about that. Uh, well, like the first thing I think is like um, everyone says that the same thing for every profession. Oh, I want to be an actor. Oh, but it's so saturated, you know, it's this and that and every model, every new actor comes every year, you know what I mean? New talent yeah. appears in Hollywood. Same with other professions. It's everything is competitive, it's saturated. And the rule for me, it's just, it's just do it, you know, just, just go for it. If you really want it, just start it. And of course, like being an unemployed artist, it's a very demanding job, you know, because you have to learn software, you have to take time to get better, you have to practice every day, you have to work hard, um, you have to have a good portfolio to start in the, in a company that you want to work for, uh, etc. It, it, it takes time. I'm, I'm three years in the industry and I still have so much to learn, you know what I mean? Like yeah. so much to, to show or to deliver. Um, and and yeah, to be honest, I think Three years in the industry is nothing. I, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, it's I'm just, really nothing. I'm just, uh, uh, yeah, ex I, I agree. I have so much to learn. I would say, like, if in 10 years I'm not as good as I think I would be in 10 years, then something is wrong with me, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you have to get this mindset to always push uh, yourself, yes. always get yes. better, always try new things and new mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah, I think the first thing is, like, don't be afraid of... If you want to be a character artist, don't be afraid. It's like most people like, oh, it's so competitive, I give up. And I'm like, okay, well, <laughs> yeah. it's your loss. Because... Lost. Exactly. Yeah. It's exactly. You, can, lost you can have the, um, the defeated mindset, you know. If you yeah. have a defeated mindset, you won't do anything in your life, right? So, I mean, I, I just went for it. I started, started meeting new people. Uh, I started uh, connecting people on Facebook, talk to them. So, Some... this is also so important, guys. Yeah, I, can yeah, I can give yes, you this advice. Yes. Network. Network yes. is... Half of the half of the game is network, and it's it's like network and like friends. You know what I mean? Like people you can show your work and they will give honest us honest Feedback. opinions. And yeah, uh, yeah. Um, the internet is really good for that. Of course, it has the really dark side. Some people can be very cruel or, you know. But you have to be selective in in which people you show your work. And, yeah. And some people are really good at uh, they they help me out throughout the years. Uh, when I was like. Uh, Four years ago, because I started studying six years ago. I did my degree in digital animation, and after that, after those three years, I started working in 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 the industry. So it was like it was a total of six years. But in those the first three years it was like discovering, oh, should I go to animation? Should I go to gaming? Should I go to uh, movies? What is this thing like ZBrush? What is this Maya? Okay, looks cool. You know, I was was experimenting. Yeah, uh, and now, like, since I'm in the industry, uh, I I try to experiment sometimes, but 
at the same you have time, more ton you have more of a tunnel vision to get where you uh, want yes yes like the, the 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 road is getting narrow and narrow right like yeah. I, I i can see the end of it and which is trying to get uh, better at character art and and that's it like i my, my advice is do not get discouraged and and if you really want to just fight for it you know everyone will say this you know <laughs> yeah. Everybody will say this about everything. It, it's so typical. Uh, it's so for, typical. For oh, I heard this by myself. Why you want to go into games industry? What is this? What are you doing? They they all have no idea what is going on in the industry. This is yeah. Uh, I think especially one, old people. Uh, yeah, old people think that games are made by fourteen year olds in their basements. You know. And they all, <laughs> they, all, they, all they do is all they do is play like, in exactly, front of, exactly. of, of, of the TV exactly. in dark rooms. Exactly. I, I <laughs> it's think, kind of funny. Um, everyone thinks that the gaming industry is that, and that's sad. And everything, everyone that thinks that that plays video games and works in the video in game industry, it's 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 a completely different thing to work on it and to play a game. You know? Yeah, it's completely different. It's, everyone has this mindset: oh, we're gonna work in this company, and it's gonna be amazing, and we're gonna try the games. You know, we're gonna model the characters, we're gonna do the environment, and then you go there. And it's like, okay, you have this amount of days to do this character, so you're under pressure every day. And yeah, it's and the hard it, stuff. Yes, and you do doing something the DVDs, and doing yeah, the, exactly. all this, all this, this grindy stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's not all it, uh, rainbows and, and, and fairy yes, tales. Yes, like it's rewarding most of the time. I think it's it's really rewarding in terms of showing your work, what you've done for a year or two. Um, but but keep in mind that it's not rainbow rainbows and and roses and and it's you're gonna it's gonna you're just gonna do the whole all the cool thing in the game you know now it's it's a really normally games are a team effort so many people work on the same thing and you have to be a team player and you know uh, you have to understand that things take time to to develop many things change things you cannot get attached to artwork most of the times because you just do something and you say oh I love this and then you show it to the art director or something. And you go like, no, 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 this is not we, what we're going to yeah, use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You and put all like, the work oh. in and then they say, no, 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 that's not the way we want to go. And then you have exactly. to put in again extra more work to get it done. Yeah, and it, it's sometimes it's disappointing, but you have to have like a little bit of cold heart, you know, to to face these. You have um, to get a thick skin, right? Yes, yeah, thick skin. That's the word. Um, otherwise, you're just going to die inside like, oh, my God, all my all my ideas are dead. You know, it's it's yeah, I get <laughs> it. We'll have to to have to keep this in mind. You know what I mean? So, you, so. did you start as a junior or a delete? Or? I, I started as a junior. Yeah, I started as a junior. Oh, yes. I, I went to Infinity Warfare uh, art team and uh, I started working on 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 things for the game because I can't talk much. Uh, yeah, yeah, I NBA. get this. You can't um, talk about this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and after that, I, I started working in the Call of Duty World War II. So, like, I, I'm two years and a half in Elite, almost three. In, in four months, five, I'm going to be three years at Elite. So, it's really good. I'm really, really um, happy with the progress I've made throughout these years. Uh, but I have so much to learn. So <laughs> Yeah, so World War II is your last finished work you can talk yes. about right yeah yeah that's that's the, the latest yes so it was a really cool project actually oh very okay. Demanding okay very demanding so, but really cool one question how did you get in the board games industry how how, the, how did that come uh so, so i uh my mom at the time was like i was i was after my degree i i said to myself okay let's i'm gonna do a, a workshop with with uh those mentors online you know what i mean you yeah. know, there, nowadays there's CGMA and all these uh, really cool schools that you can learn. But at the time I was studying, there was only CG Talk, uh, yeah. CG Society, and there was this uh, workshop from a guy that worked in Call of Duty, uh, sorry, in God of War, um, and his name was Caton Calloway. Um, okay. And he has a very um, specific character that he made for the tutorial, and uh, it's like. Um, it's like a goblin with some horns, and it's like brown, not green, you know. And it's very, very common in Arn Art Station because many people did the the the, the, the tutorial exactly. The workshop. And and I was uh, I was uh, I I did the course with him to to 
to do a character myself and to learn more. And my mom was like, oh, can you try to get a, a freelance or something? Try just just check online and, and see how it goes. And 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 I check online a, a website called CG Cow, I think. I don't, I don't open that website for, for years now. Um, okay. And I saw there like a post like from Fantasy Flight Games and they were saying, uh, oh, uh, we need a sculptor. We need sculptors for for uh, miniatures, and ah, this is this is the pay. And um, I was like, okay, I'm gonna apply. I probably they will say no, but you know, I will just try. <laughs> yeah, and you then, always should try. Yeah, exactly. And then I I applied, and two days later they removed the, the ad, you know, like the, okay. the the job ad, and then they I was like, oh. Okay, I probably don't have the job, so <laughs> okay. Uh, two months later, I was with my girlfriend at the time, and they sent me an art test. Say, okay, this is this is the this is the first miniature we want you to do. It's like an art test. We're gonna pay you for this, and I g I gave my blood and soul for that. You know. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was like working a full month, but trying to understand like how they want things, you know, and um, he's the name that I was working, the guy where I was working with, the guy in Fantasy Flight was Nicholas Norman, and is a is a really, really cool guy. He, he I worked with him for, for so long, I think almost three years or two years and a half with him. Um, okay. And then I started in March, and then I took one month for my first miniature. And then they, they gave me a second one, and the next month I took three weeks. And then one more, I took two weeks. And then it was like, I was like in this, in this, um, I, w I was getting better and better at doing the miniatures because I knew how they wanted things, the details, everything is exaggerated. Because at my first, my first uh, miniature I did for them, I was doing everything super realistic. And they were like, oh, I, you can't do this yeah. because it's not thick enough and they won't print. So you need to do with a bigger, <laughs> everything has to be bigger. So. And I was, so it would be my next question. So, when you're doing these these figures, what what are you doing different in like in games? You have you, you they have to be printable, right? Uh, yes, they have to be printable. They have to be. There's like you cannot have holes. You cannot have things that are too thin or too smooth because every when you print something in plastic, everything smooths, right? So yeah. all the forms in the in the object have to be super super sharp. So. For example, I never used bevels. I always used crease. You know, the crease. Um, yeah, I know. It's it, yeah. It's like it creates super sharp and and it's 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 super good for for the for the job. You know, and, and it it was it was the best tool I can use for that. I cannot use those those tools for um for gaming. For characters, yeah. Yeah, or for characters or or, or even realistic uh, modeling because it looks the creases are they are complex. You know, they are not as easy as um. Adding support loops, you know, um, it's different. It's a different kind of modeling. It's simpler, of course. The forms are simpler. Uh, everything has to be bigger and exaggerated. For example, all the characters, instead of having like uh, I don't know how many teeth, but you can only have four to six teeth, you know, yeah, okay. uh, in the mouth because it's so small. And when you look at it, it's like okay, uh, the details are are showable, yeah. you know. Yeah. If you, if you put like the I don't know. A big teeth or uh, sorry, small teeth and like realistic. When you print, it's like it it's gonna be, be nothing. A, yeah. Exactly, it's gonna be smooth and there's nothing in the mouth, you know. Um, so yeah. I I worked for them like since March and then I started working more and more and more. And uh, on November, sorry, in September, they sent me the Doom, uh, the Doom miniatures, and I was mm -hmm. like, whoa, this is really cool. And the guy sent me uh, all of the miniatures they were gonna do. And he asked me, oh, how many you want to do from this? And I'm like, everything. <laughs> I want to do everything. <laughs> and they were like, um, okay, we're going to do this. We're going to do the following. You're going to do three of them. Choose three and do them. And if we are on time, because we have to deliver this until December, which will like September, October, November, four months approximately. And, and I was like, okay, let's do it. And I started doing it. And uh, everything was going well. I was doing like one Per, per week, you know, like five days per miniature, around that, uh, yeah. with, with posing and cuts uh, most of the time. That's um, pretty fast. Uh, yeah, I was getting better and better at that. Um, and it's really cool. I, I really love the progress I made throughout the years uh, working for them. And and um, in November, they called me for Dubai. And and I went for Dubai. I was still working in the miniatures. And, 
and uh, and that it began. You know what I mean? The timeline, like the, my first, my first mini, my first freelance to my first studio to to that. So in November I went to Dubai, and then in March I went to Elite. So it was like oh, uh, it's pretty you know I mean? fast. Yes, yeah. yes, and I, I still worked on uh, for them for the miniatures while I was traveling and while I was um, uh, working in other studios. So it was a little bit of overwork most of the time, but I liked it. So, you know. Yo, if you if you still if you love working much, then you should work much. I think. Uh, true, true, and especially in in my younger years, I'm I'm 41, but I feel young. And I think I need to develop my portfolio skills, career, etc. So I need to work more. Because yeah. I, I lost, I, I think I lost a lot of time in the past. Like, but I think I met so many people that I would say this with uh, comas, with uh, sorry, um, like uh, I think everyone lost a lot of time when they were young. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like knowing what, yeah. especially in this industry. Like, I know so many people, so many people. And not not in this industry, but outside this industry too. Like they don't know what they want to do because the world it's today hard. is it's, it's hard. Yeah, the world is the is world different. today is so so changing, so fast changing. Yes, yes. And you always have to yeah make yourself up. What what do you want to do with your life? It's it's hard to know. Mm -hmm. Especially, yeah, especially when you're young and you have so many yeah. other problems, growing exactly. up, having your first girlfriend, and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. True, true. And yeah, yeah. Yeah, so maybe you can tell me something about your workflow. So let's let's say, for example, Call of Duty needs a new character. What are you doing? Uh, for Call of Duty, I probably can't talk too much about it because it's it's super confidential. And you don't have to talk. You don't have to talk about the Call of Duty in depth. Just okay, say okay. what 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 are you like, doing when you when uh, you develop a character? Uh, for example, like I would, can talk about, for example, characters I did in the past, which I think. Yeah. Like um, most characters I did in the past, in terms of game work, I yeah, think they weren't sure. uh, as as good I, as I can do now. Uh, but for example, I did Jax uh, from Mortal Kombat. I didn't finish it at the time because when I started Jax, I received the Doom miniatures. So ah, okay, yeah. I was like, okay, I have to get this job because it's Doom and it's really cool and it's paid, you know. So I didn't finish Jax. But uh, the first thing is like to get a lot of reference. I use I use Pure Ref. Which is a software uh, you can put put a lot of photos in there, like a lot of them, and you can see them all of the t at the same time, and it's really really good. So it's kind uh, of a it's kind of application when you're modeling or when you when you're sculpting, it's just on your screen and it yes. it holds all those pictures together. Yeah, exactly. Ah, okay. Exactly. It's a, a free software and it's really good. Everyone uses it, and it's it's the best friend for your second screen. <laughs> you, everyone is, is gonna have one uh, and the second screen and. That's the first thing. Like, so where, where are you getting the reference from? Uh, Google, Pinterest, ArtStation. Like, for example, I, I, always, I always do this for my artwork, which is, for example, uh, Jax has like a torso, metallic pieces, hair, boots, pants, right? Like the typical yeah. character. So I'm like, okay, uh, let's, okay, we have the concept art, right? Let's check the pattern, the, the folds I want from, from the pants, um, uh, the color, the, the wear and tear, like, the small details, okay, I have everything for the pants. Same for the boots, uh, same for the metal, uh, same for the skin, etc. And then I go for, I search for other artists' work. Like, okay, I, I think this metal looks really cool. I think I will do something similar, right? Because um, yeah. sometimes when you look at the reference and you look at the other, other people's work, like, uh, when it's super realistic, I think it doesn't, it, it doesn't look as as good when you have like that artistic touch that most people do, you know? Uh, they exaggerate the wear and tear or something. I like that. I, I, I tend to like that. And most people, I think, like destroyed things, you know? Um, so I get a lot of reference from other artists and then I get references from artists that I really, really, um, uh, they, I think their work is amazing. And I, it's like my benchmark, you know what I mean? Like yeah. I tried to reach that 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 goal. That level. I think it, I mean it takes time. It took time for them to reach that level. So it will take time for me to reach that level. It's good to have that, but I don't think most of the time, especially when you're starting. And I think I'm, I'm I'm not starting, but at the moment, like I'm I'm starting to get better. You know. Yeah. Um, it's I think the result will never look as good as there, but. The next but one you will always be better. Try your best to get the yes. result on like the next one, like and the next reference. one will be better, and the next one until you get like 
most artists they get like um, a specific um, like when when you see a sculpture for some from someone you know oh this guy is from this guy you know this sculpture is from this guy because it looks like it has the same brushes you know the the same yeah. texture and uh, there's a lot of artists that have that uh, artistic um, touch. Um, most most artists, I think, they discover that from throughout the years, like doing a lot of stuff and, and trying out different stuff. Yes, and, and then they reach a certain level of oh, this is my style, you know, artistic style. Yeah. So you, you kind of have to find your own uh, artistic style. You know, it's always some trying out stuff. What what, what a lot you can work the best and all this stuff. It yeah. takes a lot of time, but um especially for other artists the best way to 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 study like to to know how your artistic life will, will work is to look at other artists in the past you know and i think yeah. it's the best way to learn so you don't get disappointed in saying oh in one year i'm gonna be like uh rafael grossetti you know just like saying this and it, it's not gonna work like that i think it's not gonna work like that uh, no you have to, it takes time you know so <laughs> So yeah, let's let's keep on going. So, um, what what is your next step? You first you first mm -hmm. find your reference and so yeah, I first find my next? reference and then I start with uh, ZBrush. I start like uh, sometimes from a sphere or from a cylinder or sometimes from a base mesh like body oh, okay. base mesh. Yeah. And um, and then after after doing that, I start sculpting like the big stuff. I never go into details, especially on like the first weeks. I don't care about details. I care about like silhouette and I care about form, right? So I care about like how how big are the tor how big is the torso how how wide are the shoulders how is the the jaw the face you know um, I, I I most of the time I work with the with the low subdivisions you know yeah. uh, how thick are the legs how tall is this guy is the is he tall like are the hands big or you know um, those are, are the, the the big details and then I started like with marvelous I do the clothing. Um, uh, for Mar for Jax, I didn't do it because at the time I wasn't really good at Marvelous. But now I actually redid the pants, but I didn't post it online, and and um, and so I I did the I normally do the things in Marvelous, uh, especially clothing, of course. And then I go to ZBrush to detail, etc. Uh, for example, straps um, and uh, some small stuff. I do it in Maya uh, because. ZBrush is really cool, cool to sculpt, but when you have you want some details to really good look good, um, I think you have to do it in Maya with clean topology. It's like, for example, you're into guns, right? And if yeah. you do a gun in ZBrush, most of the time the details, if you look really close, they were gonna look sloppy. You know, they look like yeah. clay, and they yeah. don't look like metal. And you want them to look like like really good surface. metal. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So, for example, for the arms, uh, I I I did a sketch in ZBrush. And then I go to Maya and clean it up and go back to ZBrush and, so and it's, work from. It's those two programs are like, uh, most for your workflow. You kind of uh, export yeah. to ZBrush, import to Maya and clean up, then back then back to ZBrush, ZBrush and for details, okay. etc. Um, and then I go back to Maya. I, I decimate it and I do the low poly. Uh, I do the low poly in Maya. I used to work with Topogan UV layout, but I decide to just We'll use Maya. Um, there is no software which is the U which is doing the UVs really, really, really great. Uh, true. I mean, the UV layout is good. I think it's better than Maya. Yeah. Uh, especially in some some tools, they are really good. Uh, I I use it at work sometimes when I want something that Maya isn't doing. I need to go there to UV layout and do it there because Maya, for example, Maya doesn't have the bleed for the texel density. You know. Yeah, like um, and doesn't have the rectify as good as the UV layout. So, uh, and then I go back to 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 Maya. I I I've learned this with Gilberto Magno. He's a Brazilian artist, and he was using uh, Maya at the time for Retopo. And as I decided to to I, I told myself like this, I'm gonna use Maya. I'm gonna try it hard and and see how it goes. And then from then. I just started using Maya and forget about Topogan, forget about UV layout, and uh, I you wanna, I you want to stay in one yes. software, right? Yeah, exactly, That's, exactly. Yeah. And and I, I think I I am f as fast as in Topogan or in Maya, you know. So, yeah. Um, and then I go to I do the bakes in X normal, but now everyone uses Marmoset three. Um, 
because yeah. you can bake it in marmoset tree which you is can really bake good. so so good in marmoset yes. I, I try I, i'm currently baking in marmoset as well and it's pretty pretty amazing mm -hmm. i did bake um, in substance painter before and it was not near that good uh and substance like painter is is I never tried it, or maybe I tried it once and I don't even remember because it looks looks the interface is so ah yeah I I, I really like the for example X normal or Marmoset. It's like here's the high, here's the low, just do the job, <laughs> you and, know, and keep going. And, yeah, exactly, and it's so straightforward. Uh, but um, when uh, when I do the bakes, I go to Substance Painter. Uh, I used to use Quixel at the time uh, when it was like the big thing, but now it's it's Substance. Substance won the race, Substance unfortunately. Substance won the race, yeah. Uh, and uh, I use Substance. And then for the rendering, I use Marmoset again. So it's like I try to narrow all my software, like five software, six around that. Um, uh, so yeah, Substance, Marmoset, Xnormal, and Photoshop too. Photoshop is like for the editing or editing the, te editing the, texture the textures, cleaning textures, cleaning normal maps, uh, AOs, etc. Uh, do, uh, clean up the renders, you know, or do something yeah. fancy on the renders. Just post uh, post processing. Exactly. For the posing, sometimes like since it's a character, um, I we use normally ZBrush. I use ZBrush and or Maya, because most of the time we don't do rig, right? We don't have time to do rigging, so you're, just like. So you're not rigging in at Elite 3D. No, no, no. So no. you're just delivering the mesh and the textures and all the exactly. stuff. Exactly. Exactly. And ah, the rest okay. is, is, the is an outsource, it outsource art. So we just do yeah. the art. That's all. So you just do the art and and yeah. Mm -hmm. The rest is 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 from them. So ah, from okay. Company work okay. On. Yeah. Okay. It's just uh, modeling and concept art at the time, and at Elite. So there's no animators. There's no riggers. You know. I really, really like how Elite 3D is is approaching the the game development stuff. Uh, I think they are the biggest studio which is not producing games in general. Mm -hmm. I would say. Mm -hmm. I don't know any bigger studio like Elite. Um, which is like, which is just delivering the 3D stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, there's a lot of studios in China and. That we okay. don't know of. <laughs> I, I don't even know of, but I heard of, you know what I mean? Like, uh, and it's like, for example, Elite 3D is like 120 people, I think. So yeah. it, you think it's a lot, but it's not. Like, it's not. Okay. It's not. It's not. Like uh, other other studios have like 1,000 people, 500 people, uh, 800, you know. Uh, it, it yeah. yeah. Um, but it's, in terms of outsource, like, I think it's... A big one. It's starting to get a, a really big name in the industry, and I'm really happy for that because when I started Elite three years ago, it was a completely different studio. Like you don't oh. know how much it changed through. What, what changed years. the most? Uh, a lot of things, especially uh, in terms of um, bigger projects. Uh, the 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 office itself. We changed office to a a completely new one. Um, nice. New, with new the, offices are always amazing. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, it was really cool to see the process of, of changing from one, one old office to a new one. And now everything is like uh, we have air condition, you know, because in the other one, some rooms had air conditioning, others oh, don't. Oh, okay. Yeah, and and in Spain, it was, it's really, really hot. Yeah, especially here in Valencia, which is 90% uh, summer. Oh, <laughs> you know, 90% yeah. of the time is summer here. So. Um, but it was really good. Like, um, and I, when I came, when I came to lead, we were like 60, 80 people around that. And now you're double. Yeah, around that, like, uh, 120. Yeah. So a lot of people came in and a lot of cool projects, um, and new website, uh, new, new office. Uh, yeah, you had a whole new design yes, for your website. Yes, I, I everything, think. everything. Just grew super super fast in two years. Uh, oh, it's nice to see. Yeah. It's really really nice to see that you can and, actually make money with just outsourcing, mm -hmm. because and, the games are always getting bigger and you always need more stuff. And mm -hmm. yeah, it's kind of nice to see. Uh, yeah, I hope I hope the the industry gets gets better and better in terms of of work and and like especially the crunch things. You know, like um, we we spoke about this before, like. 
Uh, the Rockstar, yeah, the Rockstar yeah, thing, like, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, I think I hope that the industry gets better in terms of of not being a crunchy place. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, uh, it's cool to work on games, but I don't think killing yourself to to do something for another person yeah. is is really good to hear. You know what I mean? Uh, but I was saying. Um, I was saying, like, I was gonna tell you a funny story how I uh, went to Elite. So yeah, sure, sure. I, I I came. I was in Dubai. Sorry, I was in Portugal. I was doing the miniatures. I remember that I started in March, right? Yeah. And I was like May, uh, June, around that time. I I did an interview for Elite, and they were going, oh, um, okay, if we need you, we're gonna call you in September, and no one called me. So I was like, okay. <laughs> I, I had I had you this interview. You don't get the job. Yeah, I didn't get the job, right? Uh, the, the the studio was growing. They needed people, but they probably got uh, Spanish people first and the foreigners, right? Um, and then I, I I had an interview to to Elite because I know a guy who worked at Elite. I never met him. He's he was Portuguese. We spoke on Facebook and stuff, right? And and he spoke about me to to my boss. And. Uh, we had the interview and I didn't I didn't get the job. So I went to Dubai. I kept working on freelance, etc. And um, and then uh, my boss uh, went to talk with my friend and said, "Oh, I'm going to talk to the Portuguese guy." And my <laughs> friend was like, "Oh, is it David?" And he goes, uh, "No, but I'm going to talk to him too." <laughs> and so so he came to talk to me and and he sent me an email and uh, or a message on Skype, I think. And we had a second interview, and I said yes. I said like, okay, I'm going. Uh, and I I just left Dubai and I went to 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 Valencia. So, uh, did you apply to any other studios across Europe? Or? I did. I did. You did. I you did. I applied to Guerrilla Games. Uh, oh yeah, in Amsterdam. That's why I did the Killzone character for my portfolio three years ago. Oh, which just I... to show your dedication <laughs> to Guerrilla <Yes>. Games. <laughs> yeah, it's always uh, nice to see. Uh, yeah, I mean, I did the character a long time ago, and I look at it today, and I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> I have so much to improve at the time, you know. Uh, yeah. But it's always the same when you yeah. look at old stuff of yourself. It's like for me, I'm in the industry of 3D to say, for three years now and it's mm -hmm. when you look at stuff which i had in my portfolio two years ago it's just so ashaming but that's how you start that's how you get better um yeah yeah i mean uh, and then um I was, I was doing this character and and then of course i look at it today and i'm like <laughs> it's laughable but i like it in a in a way because i think the design looks cool uh i like the, the kill zone uh, designs um, and I applied to 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 Guerrilla Games, uh, but it took me a while to finish the character because I, uh, I was finishing the character in August. When remember the year when I started freelance? Yeah. Um, I I finished it in August and I applied it and they said, oh, I'm so sorry, we actually like your your portfolio because it was a junior artist position and it was temporary, and they said. We like your stuff, but unfortunately, the position is already filled. So it was filled by another Portuguese guy, <laughs> a character <laughs> artist uh, at the time. It's kind of a Portuguese thing to get into yeah. character. <laughs> uh, I guess. <laughs> I don't know many character artists in Portugal, to be honest. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, it's, I can count with the fingers, I guess, uh, the, the amount of character artists that exist in Portugal. Um, and yeah, uh, I, I didn't get to... To to CD project, for example, when I was when I was a noob, like when I finished my elf, yeah. uh, um, I applied to CD project, but they oh. didn't give they didn't give me the answer. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, and it's it's and it's understandable because I was really really new, but I just applied because you know you never know, right? Yeah, uh, you never know. You always so, have to keep sending out those applications, even if you don't have a job, uh, even if you have a job, if you want to get somewhere else you know mm -hmm. what i mean yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, and it's, mm -hmm. it's it's yeah always try your best and i think you have to send out like 50 applications and maybe get two or three where you where they say well unfortunately mm -hmm. you don't you didn't get the job but maybe apply to a future date or something like this mm 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, you ha you have to deal with the uh, you have to have a thick skin for this too. Yeah. Like, for rejection, because uh, it's gonna be constant. By the way, <laughs> it's gonna be everywhere, and it's sometimes it's not it's not personal. And it's just about oh, like I think it's never that personal. Exactly, exactly. It's not. It's like oh, your your work sucks or. Okay, sometimes you are not that good for the uh, for the job application, but sometimes you have to keep in mind that uh, sometimes the the they have so many applicants, you know. Like yeah. sometimes it's better for them to get someone from their own country, or uh, someone with more experience. And sometimes you have to get lucky, you know, like in terms of of applying at a certain time and and if they need a person like you or you and know. Sometimes you just have to be a team fit. I think you have to to fit yes. to the team need the. The overall spirit in the team, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the the game industry is small, so anyone that it's it's a little bit uh, not a team player, uh, people know <laughs> because the 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 news they they spread fast. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like as you said before, like networking is really important, um, and some people can can like give you jobs in studios just because they like you. You know, they like to work with you. Yeah, and uh, that's really important. And maybe if you're not even if you're not that good in your uh, what you're doing, mm -hmm. you just can improve when working. Uh, yes, and I've seen like people improve. Uh, like for example, in Elite, of course, we have like people who comes in who juniors, right? And I've seen uh, their their development in throughout the, the the years, and it's it's just it's it's really people can really learn really fast if they yeah. want to. You know? That's the one advantage the juniors have against the seniors. They are hungry. They have they have this this motivation to get yes. better and to co always that's true. strive for the best. That's one thing for the juniors. We which which is always really really good. Mm -hmm. Which always is on their side. Mm -hmm. You also yeah. have to yeah. You also have I to agree. to behave the way to be hungry and to stay motivated and to always get better. But yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I've seen a lot of juniors with a really good like motivation. Sometimes too much, even <laughs> like uh, uh, they they come with this idea that it's gonna be really cool, and sometimes it's it's not that that amazing, or their work gets rejected. You know, for example, yeah. when I started working at Elite and I, I received feedbacks, I was like super super. Um, how could I say this? Um, pissed. In a way, angry or pissed because I was arrogant to say that my work was amazing right but it wasn't right you never see it you have to you have uh, to be more self criticized right yeah you have to be more open more uh, self critic you have to uh, uh, open to change that's really really important i learned that really fast to be honest <laughs> really really fast like well, after, i think like, the, the best way started. to learn the best way to learn this is to start in a studio as a junior right uh, especially jobs honest, in the yes, street yes yes yeah um, i think I think I learned so much more at Elite than if I would stay at home uh, doing 3D and portfolio yeah. and stuff. Uh, yeah. You learn so much from other people. Like you don't know how much you can learn from other people. And the experience is really, really yeah, important yeah. for other jobs. Even uh, yeah. even if you don't have the education or the the best portfolio, mm -hmm. you always have some credits or some experience, uh, which is yeah. I think really important in my mm -hmm. opinion. Uh, I, I never worked yeah, in the yeah. industry before, but it's everybody, it's it is what everybody says who is from the industry. I agree. Like it's really important to not be a dickhead, you know. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's the first rule. Uh, and of course, like your portfolio can be good, can be amazing. Of course, it can be bad, right? But uh, in my opinion, I prefer to have to work with a, a good artist that is a really cool person, than with an awesome artist that is just. Ah, horrible to work with. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Horrible to work with. And what you with. think? This uh, is so important. Who you're gonna work with? You uh, can't yeah. Imagine. Yes, yes. Like in, uh, in toxic, toxic environment, it's so consuming. Even they if the just, work is amazing. Yeah. Yes. Even like sometimes you don't even want to work because it's just ah, these people, you know, or uh, this person, uh, just just annoying or you know. It really depends. Uh, yeah. But I, as I said before, like I, I like to work with people who are cool. They can do the job. They are like not super superstars. You know, I don't like superstar mentality. Um, yeah, I, I think it's super arrogant. Yeah. yeah, I think it's super arrogant, and 
it doesn't fit uh, fit a team work. Remember, it's like a, th a teamwork uh, in the in the, in the gaming industry. So, uh, yeah. Everybody's helping the other and just giving and, exactly. and getting. Everyone has the same final goal, right? Yeah, getting uh, the job done and making amazing yes. games. Yeah, exactly. That's that's the that's the the motto. That's the 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 theme of the the gaming industry. Do your job, work as a team, and we you can all, deliver. You always finish work product. to one go yes yes so what are you what are you playing are you are you are there any games you are playing or uh, are you just making games uh when i used to uh i when i used to play games like years ago i used to play world of warcraft counter-strike like the, i was the classics uh, yeah the classics uh when i was young i never changed games that much right i i i just grab a game and i just play it i, I played for years right and okay. for, for, for example, my younger brother, he is the complete opposite. He gets a game, he plays it. After a week, he's playing a new a new one. After a week, he's playing another one, you know? And it's it's <laughs> <laughs> it's different for me. So I used to play like World of Warcraft, Warcraft 3. Um, I've been to shooters, strategy, uh, RPGs. Um, I always like every kind of game, to be honest, like uh, even football. I'm not a football guy, but I can play a football game on PlayStation or something. Uh, which I do now. Uh, at do you have a PlayStation? Uh, my 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 housemate has one, and we sometimes play. I have one in the studio, and when we work, and sometimes we play some some football or or racing game. You know, I can play any game. I like board games even. So, uh, but we're talking about the video game industry. So, I used to play those games when I was younger. Then I started like Hearthstone, Heroes of the Storm, Dota. Oh yeah yeah know. yeah. Uh, for example, in terms of MOBAs, I I always always into Dota or Heroes of the Storm. Uh, Hearthstone was my thing. I I tried to get a uh, best of Europe, and I did it. I I the second season of Hearthstone, I I reached the 33 top like yo uh, 36 I think 36. <laughs> oh, that's, uh, that's amazing. Yeah, but it, but it was like yeah, I had to play every day for like two hours, you know, or more. And yeah, train and get to, better and yes, turn the yes. cards. Uh, yeah, and and it was very very draining, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna stop. <laughs> what what uh, I'm I always had, had this this thing with me, which is when I start to see something that it's affecting my life, I just cut it, right? Especially if it's a game, I just uninstall it. And even if you don't want to play it anymore, you just keep playing because you want to get better. Uh, and yeah, you're not and truly truly enjoying the game. Uh, you true. just playing to get into into tournaments and stuff mm -hmm. it's hard uh, yeah and it's it's when when something it starts to get competitive isn't isn't fun right yeah especially it's again. never fun yeah exactly um so uh i used to play um i used to play left for dead too and the first one too i i like strategy games sometimes like settlers or I which is german uh, yes, which is German, and I'm waiting for the new one to see yeah. how it goes. Uh, <laughs> uh, I even checked today if there was like something new because I haven't played much uh, for these last months. Did you and play Anno? Uh, I played Anno the 1604, I think. Yeah. And it was really good at the time. I really liked it. I liked the game called Knights and Merchants. I think it was German too. I yeah. don't know. German, Germans are good at making. Uh, it's kind of funny. They're yeah, making a strategy yes. game. Maybe it's uh, kind of, a, yeah. of the German um, mindset of getting everything right and everything is in uh, control. And yes. uh, yeah, I even, don't know. Even Settlers of Catan, which is a board game, is made by a German guy. So I don't know yeah, if you knew this. Hitler von Catan. Yeah, it's yeah, it's German. I played uh, it with my friends. Uh -huh. I was young. And, yeah, yeah, and it's it's I don't know why the Germans do this, but it's I hope they keep doing it because I like it. So <laughs> I, sometimes like I have this this mindset which is like, oh, I want to play some action game or I want to kill some people or I want to score some goals or sometimes I just want to listen to music and and build a city and see the the crop the farms and the pigs and you know, yeah, uh, with uh, with the medieval uh, mindset, you know, I don't know why. But it's just it's like it's um I would say seasons, you know? It's it's to relax. Yes, yeah. yes. Uh I, I stopped playing any game competitive uh competitive competitively, sorry. Um because all all the games like they're super competitive, like with the esports and Twitch now. 
Everything yeah. is is there is, is coming more and more yeah, stuff with yeah. esports. I think. Yes, I never played Battle Royales to be honest. Okay. Uh, uh, one of the last games I played was Dishonored. Dishonored, the first one. Like I played yeah. it two months ago. Uh, I finished like in two weeks. I was playing very very relaxed, like like two hours per day or one hour per day, and 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 just to get yeah, to just get to, zoned, to, to yeah. zoned out, yeah. Yeah, uh, um, because at the moment, like I'm, I'm more focused on doing portfolio. Uh, I stopped doing freelance to work more on portfolio, to go more to the gym or work out more, to feel better, you know. To like, do more for yourself, yes. yeah. Be- because now that I, I think I reached a certain level of, of, of professionalism, like, professionally, uh, like where I can stop a little bit in terms of work, 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 like go home, work on freelance, go to yeah, the studio, work, just to reach your and, goals, and, yeah. And sometimes I don't go to the gym or I can't be with people or, you know, and at the, you I have think to sacrifice I sacrifice pretty much a yeah. lot. And I decided to stop that and just focus on things that actually really matter, which is health. <laughs> uh, and, um, and because professionally, I think uh, I'm okay at the moment. Uh, I like where I am. Um, and uh, I overwork isn't my thing now. Like I, I work a lot, but uh, I it's not freelance. It's like personal stuff, you know. Like I do it in a very slow pace at home. At the moment, I'm re- I'm doing it actually. Um, and uh, listening to some music, grabbing yes, something to exactly, eat, and not, exactly. no pressure. No just, pressure. Exactly. Just doing your no, stuff. No, no deadlines. No limitations. No yeah. nothing. You know. Yeah. Just, just me and my my stuff, and and I think it's a season that it's a thing that started in June, and I hope it lasts a long time, you know. Yeah, so, that's the freedom you have to get when you when you have a job in the industry and you're happy yeah. with your life and mm-hmm. you just want to keep keep developing to yourself, but just mm-hmm. in a in a way of of yourself or, mm-hmm. or what you want. I, I've seen studios like um, I've heard studios uh, that people that work there are like family people, you know, because sometimes, for example, uh, at Elite and in this industry, which is a really s- recent uh, industry, you will find a lot of 20-year-olds, right? Yeah. And, and and young people. And young people, they are not married. They they don't have relationships. Most of them, they are just like play games, play games, play games, right? And yeah. I've heard a lot of studios that uh, everyone there is like married and has kids. Yeah. So it's really, really weird uh, and really cool because as I'm getting older, um, I think those things are super important in the studio. Pe- uh, studios that value uh, family, studios oh, yeah. that value uh, marriages, relationships. You know, uh, I, of course, at Elite, uh, <laughs> that happens. They, everything. There's a, a big respect for that. Um, you know, but there's a lot of studios out there that. Uh, that's they still have to uh, manage that. Um, it's still taking time for them to manage that, but they will get there. I hope. You know? I think every every studio should get there because we are growing older. We are getting kids. We are getting married, and all those stuff. Mm-hmm. And they have to they have to push us in a way to yeah to feel happy in the in the company. Exactly. Exactly. Yesterday I was at the games making games conference in Munich and the guy named oh. Samuel De Vos was talking there. He's a junior environment artist at Massive in Malmo. Uh-huh. In, uh, Mal- oh yeah, okay. Uh, in Sweden, Ubisoft, mm-hmm. Ubisoft Massive, and mm-hmm. they have kind of a pretty pretty nice culture. Oh, that's they are, good. Well, they are developing and they are encouraging the guys to have parties. They have release parties and. Mm-hmm. I think it's it's so such a nice environment to work in when you love what you do when you are around people who fit in the team who you who you're friendly with and all those stuff and this is so amazing to see that more and more companies are going in this direction. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, for example, I don't know if you heard about Riot. Yeah. Uh, they do Riot the, Games. The, yeah, Riot Games. Um, I heard it's like I heard it's one of the best places to work, and. Um, I, I wasn't never I was never a League of Legends guy, but but most of my friends were. And one other thing I heard about their in their company was like, um, if you want to work there, you have to have 
a really good life balance. Because I have yeah. heard of people who have super good portfolios, like amazing portfolios. And when they get there and get the interview, uh, of course, the interview lasts one day, by the way. Yeah. It's uh, you go there. Uh, and, and all this stuff. Exactly. You go and meet the people in the studio. They will they will see how, how you are, if you are an awkward person or a guy who is really, really uh, who is nice to work going, with. Exactly. Yeah. Easygoing, et cetera. And, and if you're not that guy, I think they, they won't hire you. And I personally, once I heard this, I was in love with, with, with that concept. Like, oh my God, that's really amazing because uh, especially like every job I heard, I, I had in my life, like there's always awkward people, right? But Yeah, there are always awkward people everywhere. Yeah, uh, but especially in the gaming industry, there's a lot of people who just play games and, and I don't know, it's, it's you have to, to see for yourself. I won't, I won't say anything more because <laughs> I'm talking too much, I think. Yeah. Uh, but they, there's a lot of awkward people, you know what I mean? That's what I in, say. Especially, especially with people who are into games, there are a lot of people who are not really socialized. You know what you mean? I know uh, this, this sounds a pretty... Uh, yes, that's true. Uh, many people, they don't like yeah. to socialize. It's, it's, and it's, yeah. if you want to work in a company where, which, is, which is having this culture, which, is, which are getting more and more companies, mm -hmm. um, it's pretty hard to get a job, to be honest. Uh, yes. You can be you can be so good. You can have amazing portfolios, but if you can talk to people, or if you're not that that kind of a team guy, mm -hmm. I think you don't get the job. That's it. I would say. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I I I'm in favor of of that that mentality. Like I like this mentality as well yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. games are not everything, and work is not everything. Exactly, exactly. Work is not everything. Games are not everything. Of course, it it should be like. The, the, the thing be. is, you, you work you work in the, that yeah. company, and of course, the game is is the most important thing. You want sure. the game to be the best, etc. But, but uh, I don't come want on, to you talk have a life, right? All the time about <laughs> games, yeah. I want to talk exactly. about soccer or it's just stuff I'm interested exactly. in. Or, yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, th there's people, of course, that, for example, you're interested in soccer. I'm interested in magic and cinema, etc. And it's like some people in video game industry are just interested in video games. Yeah, just it's video just, games all day. Exactly, exactly, and and it's it's like, whoa, man, you're. I think you're going too far in, in terms of your uh, tastes. Like, I think you should balance more your life. I don't know. Yeah. I I don't have that mentality, so that's why I I talk about it. You know. And this work-life balance is so important in my uh, opinion. Yeah, and I think companies like, especially with, for example, I don't know if you heard Life of Pi. They 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 had a huge crunch and. Yeah. And companies and the Oscars were there was some problems there, and I think the 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 world itself and the industry it's it's getting better, like way better. And of of course I think it has to it, it still has there's a lot to walk, you know. There's a lot to go through yet uh, to get better, and and uh, it will take time for the industry to to reach a point where it's it's really good to work for to work in yeah. this industry. Which, which, which it, it's really good to work for, but of course, there's a lot of things that need to get better. You know what I mean? Yeah, there are a lot especially, of things. Yeah, especially when once it's you kind get of a in. young industry in this in this yes, in this size. Yes. Yeah, it's getting bigger and bigger, and it's mm -hmm. pretty young. It's a it's a recent uh, career. It's a recent job. You know. Yeah. Well, it's like 15 years century. ago, nobody would would have said with 16 years I want to get into the games industry. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, are there any programs in Portugal who are supporting you with with games, or is there any any university where you can study like game animation, game art? Is there uh, anything? There's like one or two, one one or two in in Lisbon, one or two in in No Porto, and one in Algarve, I think, which is like south center and yeah, north, I know right? Algarve, yeah, yeah. Uh, and and but in Portugal, uh, there's a lot to. There's a lot of work to be done because to improve, I, yeah. I see, I, yeah, I see, like for example, Gnomon. Of yeah. course, like Gnomon is like the best, right? <laughs> I'm comparing the the uh, the best Gnomon one workshop. of the best one. Yeah. Yes, and uh, and it's like I see the work from their, from their students, and it's it's whoa, you get just like whoa, this guy, these guys are are really yeah. learning fast, yeah. and and they really get really good, right? Uh, in Portugal, it doesn't happen that way because there's there's there isn't a lot of people to teach. Um, uh, the people who teach are 
people who worked in the small industries, not the big ones most yeah. of the time. Uh, the experience. Yes, it will take a lot of time for for the industry in Portugal or the schools in Portugal to to develop and get better and the students will be better, etc. Um, but it's getting there. It's getting there very, very slowly. Yeah, it's um, the same like in Germany. There are not really any game art, any game art which which are done by the state mm-hmm. or by the by the, by the government. I, I know all, a lot of. Sorry. They're all private, and you have to pay money for for it. Like uh, me, yeah. Yeah, I mean, for example, the the one I did my degree was private. Yeah. I had to pay. I had to pay for the for the my degree. Would I know you... a lot of I know a lot of German guys who went to Holland for their degree because ah, okay. in Holland there's there's good schools. There are other countries who are really, really, really forward in this in this thing. Yeah, Sweden, uh, Netherlands. Sweden has good good schools. Uh, England. Netherlands. England has good schools. Yeah, I I, I had a and friend there who just finished so and now many he's countries on are MPC, so far so. behind. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I think for example the taxes in England or or in Canada or something they they don't tax that much for this industry because it's so recent. You know. Yeah. The the, the entertainment business. Um, it's so recent. I don't think the tax plan there is is, is as as uh, big as in Portugal, for example. Because if you want to work as a freelance in Portugal, you have to pay normal taxes, not not artistic ta- taxes. You know yeah. what I mean? So you you were on a private school, right? When you, I when was. You did I was. Your, did you when you did your degree? So would you say the private school was worth the money? Could nope. you could you have been <laughs> could you have been teaching yourself at home with just gnomnom workshops um, exactly YouTube tutorials paid tutorials uh, yeah uh, definitely ah, like is... for example for example for me I, I can tell you the price I paid I paid four thousand a month a year sorry so four thousand euros yeah. a year a, year, a month uh, a year sorry so it's twelve thousand uh, yeah. in in three years. Uh, of course, like for example, for Germany, it's three thousand, uh, four thousand. It's not that much, but in Portugal, it is a lot, right? Portugal yeah. is 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 poor, and I mean, you just can grab those four thousand euros, and there's like so many mentors online. You can pay like five hundred euros or three hundred euros or eight hundred, you know, and yeah. you can t- they can teach you for three months or two months, uh, All almost day. everything. Yeah. Yeah. Almost everything. Uh, one thing I've learned with university is that people shouldn't go to university, especially for this degree, right? For this, for artistic stuff, you know. For artistic stuff, but would you say that when you go to university, you meet a lot of people, you get kind of a network, you get kind of the possibility to meet new people from the industry? Uh, yes, actually, that's one that's, of the things. That's, the, that's the, one of the things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's the thing that actually helped me with the, um, that. I think it's really good from the university. That's that's the only thing I, I think it's it's good that I took from the university, which is I met a lot of people. A lot of people were there because they didn't know what to do with their lives, and and uh, the same when when I was in engineering, you know, uh, some people happened to be in animation because they yeah. they like Disney movies, you know. Uh, yeah. But it, it it isn't as people think, and there's a lot of people who are really really uh, driven, like they really want this. They they understand that the industry is this and that. Um, they really like the artistic uh, background of of movies and games and etc. And those people are very very limited in terms of like I only know three people who from my class that really want this because the the rest were like 30. So you know you can okay. count right like 20 around 27. They are just like they really don't want this as much as we wanted. So. You and have to really people, want it, yeah. Yeah, and those people that I I've met on university, um, I, sometimes they 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 give me freelance jobs or you know, because they know me and they know who I am, they know my work and and that's really cool. That's one of the the cool things about about university, which is like I met people who are really driven and they work in in other studios and. And you yeah, get kind it, of a network, yeah. Exactly, exactly. We, and which you don't you. get when you just sit at home. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, that's true. That's true. And they they know you, and they introduce you to new people. And since they they know you quite well, you know, it's it's quite easy. So, it's that's the only good thing about university. It's the network. That's all. <laughs> that's everything. Yeah. <laughs> 
it's sad, yeah, but it's I was I was thinking the same before I started my my bachelor of game art mm -hmm. at the moment because yeah I saw so many people who were at the SAE Institute and their portfolio was pretty pretty bad when they left school and I was thinking what have you been doing for the three years or two exactly, years exactly exactly and I in my opinion you have to put in so so much work in your free time and the the stuff you get taught at the SAE or at the, at the university is not that good. Not mm -hmm. not enough for the games industry, I would uh, say. No, you have to work a lot at home. You get the basics and that's it. And mm -hmm. just just work for yourself with the rest. Yeah. For example, in the Dutch the Dutch school I, I saw, like they are really, really demanding in terms of like they ask for the artists to on their last year to make portfolio. So yeah. To get, only... in, to get in the industry and exactly. to get in the university. Exactly. And they only uh, leave the school when they have a good portfolio. And I'm like, whoa, this, this is, is so important. This is so yeah. basic and no one does it, you know? Yeah. I, I, I don't know why. Because because for me, like most universities, they just want your money and that's it. Yeah. Like, and they, it, they, it's a business. They, they, they change money with your degree and your degree is nothing in the industry. They don't look at the degree. They just look yeah, at the exactly. work. Exactly, university and it's a business, it's, and it's working right for them. So, unfortunately, yeah. And and most people will realize that the degrees are nothing. No one asks me about degrees here. On my, it helped me like it helps it helps you to get a visa. You know, for example, for Dubai, it probably helped me to get a visa faster than a person who doesn't have a um the degree a yeah. degree, but. Either way, I would ha I would have the visa anyway. You know what I mean for Dubai. Yeah. So, um, it, it's it's a sad reality about the university. I think everyone says the same about universities. Everyone in this industry. Yeah. It's, they say it's it's a waste of time, money, and you can learn by yourself, and which is true. It so, is so true. Yeah. But I think you when you, when you're going to university, you get more of more of a you you learn yourself better. You know what I mean? Yes. You kind of get of a feeling for yourself. What can you do under pressure? How you do? How you deal with the with the time pressure? Mm -hmm. So you have to. You always have to give some work to the university to get feedback, and it's that's that's one thing I always said that the university is having an advantage because yeah, it's more for yourself to development, but on a technical standpoint, it's not enough, and it's it's, it's not just enough, yeah. it's just a waste of money. Yeah, uh, I, I was I was mm -hmm. knowing that before. Yeah. One thing I I agree I agree with what you said, and most uh, most of the things I've done in university were just things to try. I sorry, yeah. I tried many many things, and I was like, okay, I don't want this. Ah, oh, this looks cool. Let's keep on exploring it. Oh, okay, I don't like this at all. I learned like photography. I learned uh, illustration, drawing. I was I wasn't very good at drawing at the time. Yeah, you know, uh, well. I'm not that good in drawing. I'm uh, more of a 3D. And mo most people aren't. And <laughs> most people who work in 3D and they used to draw, they work so much on 3D that they forget to draw. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it's sad. It's sad. Like they they of course like artistic concepts and skills they you never lose them right, which is yeah. good. Uh, but it's sad that I, I know artists, really good artists, and they don't draw anymore because they are so consumed by the 3D <laughs> that their skill on drawing is is completely obsolete. So, yeah. <laughs> it's just, it just, yeah, so many people in my classes especially are just saying, I want to be a concept artist. Every, everyone wants to be a concept artist because they can draw. They can, uh -huh. there are so many talented people who can really, they can draw really, really good, and and I'm always saying, yeah, okay, just do your just do your thing, and you will see concept art. This is pretty, pretty hard. Uh, yes, concept art is like I think it's harder than 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 3D. Yeah. In terms of art, and in terms of getting into the industry, and because concept art is about pre-production. It's re really freelance, right? It's much uh, of a freelance job. Uh, yeah, it's like. It happens to be like freelance, and uh, most of the time is uh, it's pre-production. So it's like you work in the beginning of the projects, and most of the time it's like I've heard of directors that have three concept artists, you know. Yeah. And when you start the production of a movie, there's like hundreds of modelers, you know. Yeah. 
like hundreds and it's like it's a very specific uh position in the industry i think character artists too and weapon artists and vehicle artists and environment uh but it, it, i think it's the, harder the demand is really high for, yes. for these for these yes. positions yes but it's also a pretty hot competition mm -hmm. so yeah david i think we are done mm -hmm. I oh, think man. you can call this done. I, I it's say my first thank podcast, you. so... <laughs> yeah, my, my first as well. I, I, will, I will get this going. We'll, we'll see where, where, the, where the game the game art talk is going. So mm -hmm. I have some more guests in the future episodes uh -huh. already. And yeah. I'm curious to, say... to, 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 to see your progress in the in this man i will listen to your podcast in the future oh thank you so uh, so much i will see I will, I will load it on youtube and we'll see uh -huh. it's really good to to see something from its um from its birth and, yeah. and growing and i hope it grows really really well and i thank really you so much. I, I like to talk a lot so uh yeah. it's, it was really good to, yes, to well. be your guest you know and this uh podcast okay and uh i hope to see you in the industry and uh and i hope to see your podcast in the future thank so, you thanks very much thank you so okay. bye 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 man thank you very much